Hi, welcome to part three of our social login with LinkedIn series. Social login is cool because user can just click on a button and he's automatically logged in. So far, we have created this login button, this login functionality with all the OAuth and API calls in the background. And now this, this part is all about what you can do with this data. And there is a really a variety of things that you could do with this data. For example, you can open a user session, you can connect a already existing user account. But in this episode, we're gonna use the login button just as a sign up functionality that you can integrate into your homepage. So the user doesn't have to type their email address and their name, instead can just click. So what we need to do now is once we have extracted all this data, first name, last name, email address, we need to put it into our CRM or into our mailing list provider. Right, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this series. We're gonna use MailChimp as the reference, but I think every um, big mailing list provider has a similar API. So follow along uh, and I will provide the source code as a download. Now let's get started and do some coding. So here you can see the code that we have created the last time in episode two and part two. Here are the main method basically where we first get the access token, call the me API, call the email API, and then we return. Now, instead of just returning, we're gonna do a little bit more. We're gonna call our email list provider. And there we need another API, we need another API call. So I'm just gonna take this template here from the call me API on LinkedIn. And I'm gonna modify this. This is the MailChimp API. Well, we need to go look on the MailChimp developer page, how this is actually called. So let's just head over to the browser and go to developer portal of MailChimp, right? So here we find the API reference. And what we want to do is create a new member. Um, and the way this is done is usually that you have some kind of a list API, a list or audience management API, here it is. And now we want to add it this member to an existing list. So we go here, members, and here's the URL that we need. It's a post, right? We want to write something, so that's as expected. And we have a list ID as a path parameter. Uh, we're gonna need to do a post. All right, and um, the base path we also need. We need to have the list ID, and then we need to have some type of credentials. And then what needs to go in as a request body parameter is the email address and the status. So it's basically those two which are required parameters. We can already prepare this. And the status, what possible value is subscribed, right? So we take subscribed as the value. And now the email address, this is the one that we got from LinkedIn. So instead of pushing the access token, we now take the email address from LinkedIn as a parameter, put it in here. Now, we need to put in this request object, and this request object goes in as the body. And now the body needs to be a string, so we do a json.stringify of our request object. Then the header is not correct, it's not a bare access token. We need to now go on, basically on our MailChimp account, and select account extras API keys. And here is a list of API keys, 
right? They are going to be provided here. And we just copy out the API key. Now, the way it works on MailChimp is that they protect their APIs with username password. It's basic auth. You have a username, but this username can be chosen freely. And you have a password, and this password is exactly the API key. So they get the API key on this website, and then you create a basic auth credential. And I'm going to show you how to create this basic auth credential. So creating the basic auth credential is by first using the username, and we can use anything, colon, and then you use your API key. You just copy it over from your MailChimp site. Let's just say it's something like this, okay? And then you base64 encode that string, okay? And it's no magic, it's just a base64 encoding. And now you can take that value and use that in your code, right? So it's an authorization, not a bearer, but a basic. <clears throat> plus the base64 string that we have just created. Okay, so now we have the authorization right, we have the body right. Now we need to create the URL because there's still this list ID in there um, that we need to figure out what the list ID is. So we ba go back into our MailChimp account. And on the MailChimp account, you have audience, and then you select the correct audience It's basic basically a list that you select, I have this test list here that I use. And then on this test list, you can go on manage audience settings. And in the settings area, you have audience name and defaults. Okay, and there is an audience ID. So you can just take this audience ID here as a list ID. All right. And go back to your source code, replace the list ID, including the curly brackets with this ID that you copied over. So far, we just have a relative path on the API URL. Now, on MailChimp, it works like this, that you need to go to a particular server where you are located on. So you go on the MailChimp account when you're logged in, and you copy the host part of this URL from the browser, copy it over as an API URL, and then you exchange admin with API. So you know you're on the on this and that um, server, right? The first part is the server, and then API MailChimp.com. And then you are on version 3.0 of the API. So the way they do it is to encode the version of the API in the path, right? And um, then follows the URL that we already know. Now, we want to test this API before we do anything more, right? So we use, um, we just call it here as a main function, call MailChimp API. That's fine. We need to provide a done function, uh, which doesn't really need to do anything. And then we need to provide an email address. So I'm just going to provide Matt at API university.com. Good. Let's check if that works. Yes, and it did work. All right. So what you see here is a 200 status response and the Matt at API university.com is added to this audience. So what needs to happen is in our main method is we're going to call this call MailChimp API. And we're going to call this after we have received the email address, right? Because the email address is what we need um, in order to call the next API. Okay, um, and now we need to do some error handling. So what you see here is the code that gets called 
at the redirect URL. So when the redirect URL of OAuth is called, then um, we get the access token, we call the me API, we call the email API, and then we call the MailChimp API in order to put this data that we got from LinkedIn into our MailChimp email provider. So what we do now is we test the integrated version, right? So in order to test the integrated version, don't forget to remove the call MailChimp API uh, before you package it and upload it to your Lambda. So what you need to do is package the source code, upload it to your Lambda function, and then test again your website. I go to my homepage. Let's see what happens when I click on this blue button. Now I'm coming back to LinkedIn. This is already good. So I can just click sign in here. Now I get redirected back to my redirect endpoint, which is a Lambda function. And now we get redirected to our 302 target afterwards. So let's go over to MailChimp, to our audience, uh, into the Manage Contacts, View Contact section, and check if it actually has been added. And yes, there is now a Matt at apiuniversity.com that was subscribed via API. Very good. Now what happens behind the scenes, of course, is relevant. Um, whenever the user clicked that button and logged in with LinkedIn, now the data gets automatically sent to your MailChimp account where it will be stored and where you can further process. Thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to download the source code. If you have liked this video, if you've learned something, then please like it. And if you want to watch similar videos in the future, then subscribe to this channel. Um, hope to see you soon. New episodes airing every Wednesday. See you then.